So where we are today, um, if you remember, I left my plywood sub deck a quarter inch shy of the back of the boat because I was going to take little filler pieces to fill this back here so that you didn't see the plywood end grain if you were looking at the transom. Basically, that's the reason I did that. Um, now, you may or may not remember that I put little, little wedges up underneath here to bring the top of the transom plane into the same plane as the sub deck. Um, also, when I did that, you could see the little uh, transom wedge. It was like 3 16 thick out here, but it wasn't the best fit. There was a tiny little gap right in here and I didn't like it. Um, so basically, what would have happened if I left the transom wedges run all the way out to the edge? There would have been a tiny little gap here. There would have been a 3 16 tall split line and then another 3 16 tall piece of mahogany to bring it up into plane with the deck or quarter inch, I'm sorry, quarter inch on top of that. So there would have been three little lines right here um, and not a very good fit. So what I did was I set up my, my little uh, DeWalt router and I drew a line here and I stapled a guide to the top of this, just a piece of stick. You could see the staple lines. And that was my guide so that I could bump into it with my router and keep that a perfectly straight line. So I routed that 3 16 tall wedge. There you can barely see it. So I routed that wedge down to the top of the transom. So this is a perfectly uniform thickness. I then took some pieces of mahogany and I cut them the correct height Come on, focus. And there's a, a 85 degree wedge on one angle or, or side. So from this top surface to this face, it's 85 degrees, it's not 90. And that matches the transom perfectly. So they're a little proud of the deck, which is great. That gives me a good clamping surface. Um, they're basically dead on flush here, but the exact same angle. So I'm getting ready to attach these. So basically, these are just going to hide my, my plywood end grain. And this is what I'm going to use to glue them in place. Little blocks with one screw. So this is slightly proud of the deck, so this will bite really hard onto that. But uh, it is a freaking beautiful fit. That's how it should have looked. But uh, basically, that's where we are. We'll get these glued down, cut off the excess here, cut off the excess over here. We'll fare this flush. It's about a, a 16th to a 32nd proud, probably a 32nd. Sand this flush, and then we can run our, our actual deck planking right up to the top of it, and it'll be beautiful and match and no plywood end grain. So that's what we're working on today, making good progress. Well, we now have the little strips glued on. Um, they are fared flush to match the top of the deck here and roughly cut off on the sides. Uh, it's, not, it's not perfect, just close. So both sides are done. Both sides turned out very, very nice. Perfect fit. No gaps. And then uh, the last couple days I've been working on the cut water. So we'll come up over here and it's, it's not done yet, but uh, it is looking pretty darn good. Pretty, pretty polished. There's a look at the, the bow eye, how it meshes into everything. Looks like one piece. So, uh, Really, really happy with the outcome. Still got some polish work to do. It's not perfect, but uh, I'm pretty darn proud of it. And all I'm using is this uh, Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Um, so I went over the whole thing with 220 on my random orbital. Then I went over it with 320 on my random orbital. Then I went over it because I couldn't find any discs. I went over it with 600 by hand, um, kind of diagonally. And then I went over it with 1200 by hand. Uh, you know, just cross hatching the pattern basically. Um, and then I came over the top of it with a few few applications of this Mother's Mag and Aluminum. I've used this my entire life. In fact, this is this can is probably 15 years old. Um, the new label doesn't look anything like that. But anyhow, uh, and I've been using my little buffer. It's about a six inch buffer and just using that to polish with. Uh, put a whole bunch of Mother's Mag and Aluminum all over the cut water. Put a whole bunch on the pad and just start attacking it and uh, I mean it's not it's not quite a mirror but it's pretty dang good I've still got some polish work still got some polish work to do but pretty uh, pretty excited about it 
So what I've done over the last couple of days was you can see like this gloss line from here over. Um, because I had to do some sanding on the very tip of the bow, I had to do some sanding in here to clearance around my weld and things like that. I needed to get all that sealed back up. Um, so what I did was the last time the cut water was on here, I drew out with my pencil the outline of the cut water. Um, masked off about uh, an eighth inch away from that line all the way down. Sanded everything up uh, with 120 and rolled on a coat of epoxy. Um, I then, I let that cure and then I masked off a new line closer yet, maybe a, an eighth inch off of these holes. Masked off a new line, sanded it again and did a second coat on it so I, I now have two coats on top of the existing three coats of the hole, but basically I wanted to get two coats on all of this exposed stuff, uh, all of the, the new exposed wood from the sanding process. So, something else I've done is I took a countersink and I, I chamfered each one of these holes. I just put a little dimple in it, and I did that for a specific reason. When I install the cut water for the final time, I'm going to put a blob of 3M 4200 on each one of those holes. I'll also coat the, the threads of my screws with 4200 and then assemble everything. And what that little little tiny chamfer is going to do is when the cut water is all tightened up, all the screws are tightened up, that's going to make basically a tiny little rubber o-ring or 4200 o-ring to help seal each one of those holes. So that's where we're at. Two coats are on now. We're getting ready to uh, test fit one last time the cut water But making good progress So what you're looking at here are some African mahogany planks and what these will be Will be my cover boards out here around the sides of the boat So I, I should have enough material here to do the cover boards from the very tip of the bow up here All the way to the back of the boat down each side. There should be enough material here I'll have to go buy a, another plank uh, for the center board and more planks for the little two inch ones, but or more boards for those But what I did was originally there were two boards here You can see the white paint pen and on this end there's yellow paint pen So originally there were two boards. These are 11 inches wide. They're actually pretty darn wide boards uh, Beautiful grain really really nice, but they were an inch thick now I talked about this in the past, but all of this top deck is actually going to be a quarter inch thick so what I did was I, we, we set up, a friend of mine has a very large turn of the century bandsaw that uh, he just finished restoring. And uh, we'll take a look at that right now. And this was actually the bandsaw's Maiden test run was resawing these planks. So we went over to his house. We set up the uh, the bandsaw and uh, Resawed this right down the middle. So it was a one inch thick plank. We resawed it right down the middle So you end up with a couple of uh, roughly Seven sixteenths planks and then we planed them down on each side to a quarter inch thickness So uh, all of these are are within like three thousands of each other. I would say all but one is within two thousands of each other as far as thickness goes. Um, and I purposefully, before we resawed them, mark the end with a white paint pen and a yellow paint pen so that they'll be book matched. So basically, if I take this and we flop this guy over, it's an exact pattern match. If you look at the grain right here, it's an exact pattern match to this side. So. I'll take this plank and we'll use it over here just like it sits and I'll take this plank and we'll use it over here just like it sits and the grain will be an identical match all the way down the side of the boat. So that's book matching and hopefully you can see how the patterns line up, you know, the grains in the wood. So anyhow, that's where we are. I can start doing my, uh, my cover boards now, I'll start getting those cut out, making good progress. So it's officially September 1st, 2017 for the month of August, 2017. We went up 13 hours. Um, so not, I mean, nothing to write home about, but still 
every hour counts so 13 hours for august uh we went up 137 dollars and 60 cents um, of that 13 hours uh, three and a half went into the deck so that brings us up to 24 hours on the deck uh, we had seven and a half into the stainless so that brings our stainless up to 42 even and that's right about what i thought it was going to take about 40 hours to manufacture uh, all the stainless parts and then the last thing was two hours what went uh, that went into the epoxy coat up here and that brings us up to 78 and three quarters hours into the epoxy coat so uh, $137.60, that brings us up to $9,074.52 invested. And 13 hours brings us up to 782 and a half hours. So that's where we are. Let's, let's take a look at the progress. So as you can see, I now have the, uh, the stainless cut water dry fit back on the bow of the boat. Um, it is 98% done polished. Uh, it's a very, very good fit all the way up and all the way down. Just looks really nice on both sides. Again, this isn't the final fit. Um, when I clear the outside of the hull, I'll pull it off one more time. And then for the final installation, I'll apply some 3M4200 on all the screw holes and uh, on the all thread for the bow eye and screw it all down looks looks very very nice I mean everything just smoothed out just right fits the boat very well here's a look down the center I mean just looks nice and and it's like a mirror I mean it's it's pretty damn shiny but we're gonna do one final polish on it so then anyhow here's this side there's a little bit of a ripple you can see um, during the final fit in 42 I'll tap that in and it'll completely disappear so anyhow, here's down this side. Again, just a, a beautiful fit. So the cut water, I would say the stainless work, and here's, here's a look at the smoothing in. Let me see if it'll focus. Yeah, just like a mirror. Anyhow, so I'd say the stainless work is, is pretty much done. Um, now we're on to deck planking. And again, here's our plank sitting up here. So um, for the month of September, should have no issue at all getting our cover boards all the way on, getting them on here, chest fit, cut to shape, and glued down. Um, again, I still have to fare this bow where it's still a little bit sharp here at the, at the very tip. I gotta get that so it's a nice smooth transition left to right. It's very smooth up here. Just this very front part is kind of steep. So I'll get that all fared down smooth. And we'll get our cover boards all cut, fit, glued down. Um, I think we'll also be able to get the king plank, uh, cut, fit, and glued down, and maybe some of these two inches in the month of September. I'm hoping so, anyhow. Um, we could be, potentially, completely deck planked by the end of September. Again, I, I hate setting <laughs> expectations because I always seem to miss them, uh, or, or finish dates on certain particular parts of the boat. Anyhow, uh, that's, that's at the very least, we'll get the cover boards done. I'm sure of that, but it shouldn't be any problem at all getting the king plank and some more deck planking done. So we are knocking things down. Um, it's not looking very good for this summer, but who knows? If we get close enough, maybe we'll drop it in the waterfall. Anyhow, um, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, rate, and comment. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Building the Zip.